Hello and welcome. I have been asked by one of my viewers how do you integrate the cosine of x squared? Now this is actually quite a special integral and it's uh, better known as the Fresnel integral and it has quite a lot of applications in optics and it's closely re related to the error function and there's a version for cos x and there's a version for sin x and the Fresnel function for cos x is simply written as c of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of cos of t squared dt and, and the Fresnel function for sine of x is equal to uh, capital S of x is equal to uh, the integral from 0 to x of sine of t squared with respect to t. Okay, but how do we go about integrating this? You might think that this expression is actually simple enough and we can use a substitution. So let's go and see how that would work. So if I just use a simple u substitution, uh, let u is equal to x squared, well then the differential of that, du, is equal to 2x dx. And if I solve for dx, I'll get dx is equal to du on 2x. And uh, this means that dx can't uh, be written independently of x. So unfortunately, this substitution won't work. However, we can still use this substitution. If u is equal to x squared, we can say that then x is equal to the square root of u, which equals u to the power of a half. And dx with respect to u is u, uh, sorry, a half of u to the power of negative a half. So that's just this differentiated. And we can then sub this in. So the integral of cos of x squared dx is equal to the integral of cos of u times a half u to the power of negative a half du. And if we tidy this up, I can bring the half out the front. So a half of the integral of 1 over root u times cos of u du. Now we have an integral that's uh, all in terms of u and you might think that uh, we can easily integrate this using integration by parts. So let's do that. So integration by parts, I'm going to let s is equal to 1 on the square root of u. So that means ds is equal to negative a half u to the power of negative 3 on 2 du and uh, so this is s and uh, let's say dt is equal to cos of u du and the integral of t integral of dt is equal to simply sine of u so in integration by parts we say that the integral of s dt is equal to s multiplied by t minus the integral of t ds. So then substituting in we've got uh, 1 over root u times sine of u. So s times t minus the integral of t, so the sine of u times negative a half u to the power of negative 3 on 2 du. And uh, if I tidy this up a bit I'll get 1 on the square root of u times sine of u plus a half outside of the integral of 1 on u, sorry, u cubed, uh, sorry, the square root of u cubed times sine u du. 
and if I scroll back up a little bit we can see that uh, these two parts are uh, very similar to each other and w this we can't actually find a closed form integral for in other words this will keep on integrating forever and ever and ever and what we're going to get is higher powers of u inside of the square root and we're either going to get alternating signs and causes here bugger you might be thinking but this is actually quite handy to know because it means that the integral of cos of x squared cannot be expressed as a closed form solution so let me write that down so the integral of cos of x squared dx has no closed form solution and what that means is we can't express this as a finite combination of elementary functions so a finite combination of coses, sines, e to the x's, tans, uh, natural logs, whatever but we can still actually integrate this and this is where the Maclaurin series comes in handy. Alright, so moving on. In one of my recent videos we discovered that the Maclaurin series for cos of x is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n times x to the power of 2n divided by 2n factorial. And if we wrote this out we would get 1 minus x squared on 2 factorial plus x to the power of 4 on 4 factorial minus x to the power of 6 on 6 factorial plus so on and so forth. Now the Maclaurin series for cos of x squared you might be thinking we will need to go through the whole rigmarole of doing the uh, the sum from uh, n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative of cos of uh, x squared times x to the power of n on n factorial well if we were to do this you'll soon find out after about the third derivative uh, this becomes an absolute nightmare so we won't do that you see the Maclaurin series of cos of x squared is actually quite easy because we can simply substitute x squared for x. So that will give us 1 minus x squared to the power of 2 on 2 factorial plus x squared to the power of 4 on 4 factorial minus x squared to the power of 6 on 6 factorial plus dot 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 and if we would express this explicitly we would say the sum from n is equal 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n times x squared to the power of 2n all over 2n factorial and now if we take the uh, index into the parentheses we will get uh, simply the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n of x to the 4n divided by 2n factorial. So this is the Maclaurin series for cos of x squared. Now this is a form that we can integrate. Let's do that. And I'm going to write c of x and I'll have a change of variables here from the integral from 0 to x of cos of t squared dt and that's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of the infinite sum of negative 1 to the power of n of t to the 4n divided by 2n factorial with respect to t. And this is a simple integral because all of these 
elements can come out the front. So we can write the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n divided by 2n factorial and all we have to integrate is the expression t to the 4n dt which is a simple power integral and uh, from 0 to x of course and r this equates to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n divided by 2n factorial of t to the power of 4n plus 1 over the new power 4n plus 1 and of course that's bounded by x and 0 and what you'll notice here is that this is now a odd function because all we have is odd powers so no, regardless of what n is t is always going to have an odd power and what that means is if we substitute 0 in for the lower bound the lower bound actually uh, disappears because it's equal to 0 and you can satisfy that for yourself if you want to and what that uh, will result in is simply the infinite sum of negative 1 to the power of n of x to the power of 4n plus 1 all over 2n factorial times 4n plus 1 and that is the explicit form of the integral of cos of x squared so this was quite a heavy tutorial so feel free to um, replay this several times and pause it until you understand it but if you found this video helpful please give me a thumbs up I hope you've learned something and I'll see you on the next video if you are currently studying math please feel free to subscribe to my channel for future videos that may help you on exams or assignments and as always please feel free to ask me any question by commenting on any of the videos that you've seen thanks for watching and I hope you've learned something